All right. Welcome back. In the last video, I lied to you. I said I was going to solve problem one and, uh, and problem two, and I didn't. I decided to just make a video for problem one, and now this is a video for solving problem two. Okay, so we've got a quantity discount situation. Um, let's, let's, see let's see how we solve it. And let's, go, let's go over to Ron. Uh, what's going on here? Let's go over the line at the whiteboard. Oops. Stylus. Hey, Ron. Thanks for passing me the magic eight ball here. Okay, so we are going to solve quantity discount problem here. So, um, in quantity discounts, we start using the ERQ. That is our place for starting to, uh, to calculate, to figure out what we should be doing as far as a, uh, an order size. So uh, problem number two here, we have um, end of demand 500 and interest rate of 20%, and it costs us $500 every time we place an order. So again, we, uh, we start out using EOQ, so we have two times the demand times the setup cost. And now that the cost of the order of the sorry, the cost of the product itself changes depending on the order size, instead of just having a single order cost number, which we call H, um, we are taking the cost per item and multiplying it by some interest rate we're going to call I. So we'll calculate the EOQ that way. And we want to start out looking at calculating the EOQ for the cheapest possible price. And if the EOQ that we calculate there is big enough to get us that price, we're done as far as calculating EOQs because EOQ is already minimizing ordering and holding costs. And then if we're at the cheapest possible cost per unit, well, it just couldn't get any better than that. So actually, let me uh, go back to my screen here. So we're going to calculate the EOQ when the price is $200. And uh, if that EOQ would turn out to be bigger than 500, so it's, pretend it's 600, then that has to be our answer. Um, if it's not, and it's not going to be, then we say, okay, well, we don't give up on paying $200. The reality is just that the only way we can get this price is if we buy at least 500 units. So since we want to buy less than 500, we're not going to go crazy and buy like a thousand. We're just going to buy 500 at a time. So we're going to look into the cost of buying 500 units at a time. And um, uh, we're not going to go calculate that cost next. I'm just going to calculate as many EOQs as we need to until we're done calculating EOQs. So because the EOQ for the price of $200 is going to be too small, we're going to go here and calculate the EOQ when the price is $212. And if that EOQ falls between the range of 150 and 499, we can be done taking EOQs. Um, and we'll calculate as our second cost calculation, the cost of buying whatever that EOQ amount is at a cost of $212.50 per unit. If that EOQ is not big enough, if it's less than 150, then we will go and calculate an EOQ for the cost of, with a, a unit cost of 225, and we'll see what that EOQ is and then ultimately calculate the total cost per year of buying that many units at a time. You with me? Okay, so uh, we're going to go look at, calculate the EOQ when the price is $200. Okay, so we're That's right, when I finish my whiteboard, it all gets erased, which seems not ideal. Uh, so, like I said, um, the two times the annual demand, which is 500 units, times the cost to place an order, which is $500. Then we divide by the price per unit, which is $200, because we're doing the cheapest one first. 
times 0.2. Now just bear with me a second. I'm looking from my tablet up to my other computer screen here and I want to make sure that I get it. I didn't land on the wrong place and I don't have any wrong numbers. So, so we have two times demand is 500, S is 500. Okay. All right, so using our handy dandy calculator, we have two times 500 times 100 divided by 200 divided by 0.2 is 12,500, and the square root is 111.8. So about 112. So we are going to, in a minute, calculate total costs when the price per unit is. Um, is $200 and the order size is 500, okay? All right, so that was our first EOQ. And again, because this EOQ, the 112, was less than 500, that's why we have to go calculate the EOQ for the next cheapest price. So we have two times 500 times 500 divided by, now the price per unit is 212.50 times 20% holding cost. Mm -hmm. And we take the square root of all that. Um, all right, so we have two times 500 times 500 divided by 212.5 divided by 0.2. Square root is 108 point four seven so I'll just round that to 108 and again we only get this price of 212.5 if we are buying at least 150 at a time and 108 is just not quite enough so we are going to um, calculate the cost of buying 150 at a time when the price per unit is 212.50 so because that EOQ was not between the range of 150 and 499, we get to play this game one more time. So we'll have two times 500 again, times 500 again, divided by, now the cost is 225 times 0.2 with the square root. So we have two times 500 times divided by 225 divided by 0.2 is 105.4, so 105. So that is below the, um, the limit on the amount we can buy and still get this price. So we will um, have a third cost calculation to do in the cost per unit. So we move by 105 at a piece, and the cost is 2.5. So between these three EOQ formulas, the only thing that changes is the price that are already underlined in green. So here the price was 200, here the price was 212, here the price is 2.25. So now we're going to go do these three cost calculations using quantity of 500, the price of 200, quantity of 150, the price of 212.50, and buy 105 at a price of 2.25. So um, we had one cost formula earlier when the cost of goods was not going to change, but now we have have the enhanced uh, bonus deleted scenes, the bonus version. So now we say total cost as a function of the order size is we have I times C. Uh, times or mm -hmm. times order size Q divided by two plus S times D divided by Q plus so so far that's been the same as to what we did earlier plus annual demand times cost per unit. Okay, so that is one of those. Oops, no. that is one of those red box formulas. I'm not gonna on the topic is too close, but you need to measure. Okay. So um, let's just jump back to what we did a minute ago. So we're gonna look at buying 500 at a time at a price of 200. 
All right, so Q equals 500. Cost is 200. Okay, so the interest rate is 0.2. The cost is 200. Um, the order size is 500 divided by 2. Cost of placing an order is 500 times annual demand is 500 divided by our order size of 500. There's a lot of 500s here. And then lastly, we have annual demand is 500 times the price of 200. All right. So this looks like it's going to run together. Um, all right, so we have the holding cost is $200 per unit times 20%. So that's 40%, $40 per year per unit. And the average amount of inventory is 500 divided by two. So the holding cost here will be $10,000. I don't know what the number is, so this seems high, but I think it's right. Less than one of these. Wrong, 10,000. Okay. Then we have 500 divided by 500 times 500. That's 500. So the ordering cost per year is 500. If you have engineer's disease and you need to double check that calculation, I understand. And then lastly, we have 500 units times $200. So we have costs of $100,000. So that's the cost of the goods. So we add on to that $10,000 in um, holding costs plus $500 in ordering costs. So we get $110,000. And $110,500. So think about engineer's disease. You ask an engineer, ask a mathematician, what's one plus one? A mathematician says two. You ask an engineer, what's one plus one? Engineer says two. Let me double check that with my calculator. And then I see the accountant, what's one plus one? The accountant says, what do you want it to be? Um, so 110,500. Um, okay, so that was that cost. Now let's see what our, our next assignment is here. We're gonna look at the cost of buying 150 at a price of 212. So buying 150 units at a time. So now, Q is 150, cost is 212.5. All right, so uh, we have 20% times 212.50 times 150 divided by two plus 500 units per order times 500 units per year divided by 150 at a time. Plus, lastly, 500 units per year times a price of 212.50. All right, so 22 times 212, oops, 212.5 times 22. So 4250 per year is the annual holding cost per unit. So now costs are down to $3,187 and 50 cents. That's much cheaper than $10,000. I don't know if you know this. Um, then we have 150 divided by, I'm sorry, we have 500 times 500 divided by 150. And we get 1,666.67. And, um, and last we have 500 times 212.5. So that is 106.250. So uh, 
total purchase package of 111,104 and 17 cents if anybody cares. Nobody cares. So that we'd spend 111,000 if we bought 150 and a shot for total cost. Cost per unit of 212.5. So um, to bring this all home. Um, lastly, we will look at buying 105 units at a time at a price of 2.5. So, Q is 105 and the cost is 225. So we have, we have 0 0.2 times 225 times Doesn't want to, too close to the edge. Living on the edge. I'm drawing on the edge. 105 divided by two. So that's our holding cost. And then our ordering cost. 500 employees per order. Divided by the times the annual demand of 500 divided by ordering size of 105. And then lastly, we have 500 units per year times a price of 225. All right, so 0.2 times 225 times 105 divided by two. So we get 2,362.5. 2 Plus, then we have 500 times 500 divided by 105, and we get 2380.95, and then we have 500 times 225, which is 112,500. So we get total cost of, no, thank you, uh, 117,243.45. So that is our bottom line here. So if we buy 105 units, 105 units at a price of 225, total cost of 117. And I would just like to point out that we are at the EOQ, although there was a little bit of rounding to get to this EOQ, which is why the 2362 and the 2380, 81, are not exactly the same, but they're very close um, because we are pretty much at the EOQ. We had total costs of 117,000 versus if we... Um, if we bought 150 units at a time, price was 111,000. And then if we bought 200 units, sorry, if we bought 500 units at a price of 200, the price is 110. So our answer, what the thing we should do is, we should buy 500 units at a time and pay $200 and total annual cost would be $110,500. Hopefully that's it.